Hello. This video is to um, go over the assignment on analyzing polynomial functions. So for this one you're given a um, cubic polynomial and you're asked to graph it and identify characteristics which include the relative max and mins, increases, um, increasing and decreasing intervals, and intervals where our graph is above and below the x-axis, and in behavior. So always read and understand what you're expected to do so you know what direction to take. Um, but up here it also says when you graph it to be sure to include all critical points um, before finding those. So just to remind you, critical points would include the y-intercept, x-intercepts, and any max or mins. Okay? So the first thing I'm going to do to see what this graph looks like is either use my graphing calculator or go to desmos.com and type in our function. So here I have our uh, cubic polynomial. I would then also, because I'm finding zeros, remember to put zero in for y2 so that I can calculate their intersection. So um, I made sure to pick a a uh, cubic polynomial that would be able to fit in a negative 10 to 10 viewing window so you don't have to modify your window but sometimes when you're graphing that's necessary and when you need to do that you would simply hit window and adjust your x min and maxes and, and your y min and maxes. In this case we can see everything we need to see so I'm going to first start off by uh, finding our zeros. So remember to find the zeros which are the x-intercepts we want to make sure we have 0 in y2 and we want to find the intersection. So to find the intersection, I'm going to press second trace five, and then I'm going to move my cursor to the left and put it over or close to where my first x-intercept is. And then we press enter three times. Make sure it says intersection so that you know you've got the right point, but we can see that it is at negative 2.3 approximately. So we don't always get nice pretty zeros. So if I want to graph um, negative 2.30 from the origin, I want to go left a little bit more than negative 2. Left a little bit more than 2. And then I'm going to label it. So I'm going to try to keep my numbers here out of the way. Negative 2.30. Please label your graph once you plot each point because those coordinates are going to be very important when we're defining the intervals we have to find. So I'm going to continue the process and go find each and every zero. As long as you're close to it, it'll find it. So 0 0.60. So 0 0.6 is going to be located in between 0 and 1, right about halfway, a little more than halfway. And then again, I'll label that 0 0.6 and 0. So next, moving on second trace 5 again, enter, 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 and we have about 2.70, 2.70, so I'm going to go 1, 2, and almost a 3, but not quite, and label that point 2.70. Now of course that takes care of our x-intercepts, but we need our y-intercept. Remember that for any polynomial function, the constant term is your y-intercept. Since it is negative 4 on my y-axis, I can go down and place a point at negative 4. Now I simply need to worry about any max or min values I have on my graph. So remember this is called a relative min because it's not the absolute minimum point on the graph. It actually does continue to go down forever. But in this area, relative to this area, this is a minimum. And up here, relative to this area, this is a maximum. So to calculate min and maxes, we're going to do similar to how we found the intersection and press second trace but then choose minimum and it's going to ask us for our left bound so I want to move this cursor to the left by pressing that left arrow and I need to be so it appears right about there is my min but I need to calculate the exact value so I'm going to move it slightly to the left and press enter to mark it. Notice there's an arrow up here that will mark it. So now it asks for right bound. So I'm going to move my cursor to the right and hit enter. So now it's marked my left and my right. 
and it says guess. Do you want the calculator to guess? Yes, we do. So we press enter. Then it will tell us our minimum point is at negative 1.1 and about negative 8. So um, if you want, you can write your min over here, negative 1.1 and negative 8, and plot that point. So I'm going to go from the origin left just a hair over where the 1 would be, and then down, there's down 5, 6, 7, 8 right about there. And I'm going to label that point. We're going to need that when we do increasing and decreasing intervals. Next, I need to locate my max. So second trace max. Same process. Here is my maximum point, but I'll need to mark my left bound to the left of this uh, point. So I'm going to hit enter to do that. It asks for right bound, so I'm going to move my cursor to the right. Hit enter and enter again and there it tells me my maximum I'll write it over here, my maximum was about 1.8 and 4.2 so we shouldn't be scared of these values just because they're decimals and when we collect real data and analyze it we don't necessarily get pretty integers so a little bit, almost a 2 but not quite, 1.8 is just shy of 2 then up 1, 2, 3, 4 and a little bit now once we have our critical points graphed we want to connect them and the shape should be like it is on the um, that we see on the calculator. I always want you to extend your graph to the edge of the paper, uh, the graph given on your paper. So we're going to start up here I know I come down here to my minimum back up through my y-intercept, through my zero I curve, there's a turning point here at my maximum go back down through my zero and continue and extend to the end of the graph. I have now graphed my cubic function. I'll conclude this video so that um, I can record a second video on analyzing it, but this will help you with the homework tonight and making sure that you graph it correctly. Good luck!